Welcome. This is a follow-up video to one that was previously done on using adaptive component families for the purpose of using railings and fences on objects that were not flat. In this session, we're going to take a close look at how we make the railing adaptive component. To start this adaptive component, we're going to go up to the application menu, over to new family, the type of family that we're going to use is a generic model adaptive. Let's open it up. For those that have done massing in the past, you'll notice firstly that this is a very similar interface. Before we go ahead and start making this component, let's firstly have a look at its category. Going up to the category parameters, we can see that it's currently set to generic models because that's what we started with. But because this is going to be for a railing, we're going to change this to a railings supports. Now there are going to be two families that we're going to make. One for just the post and a second for the post with railings. Let's start with the one for the post first. The base of this particular family is going to start with a point element. This point element can be placed anywhere inside this family space. It doesn't really matter because being an adaptive component, this is going to be placed based on this particular point. Selecting the point, we're firstly going to make it an adaptive point. And secondly, having a look at its properties, we can see that this is a very specific type of adaptive point called a placement point that says that when this family is placed into the project model, this point is used for the purpose of placing the component. There's a second property that we will change and that is the orientates to. We want our posts and our posts with railing families to always be vertical. So we need to change this specific property to global Z then host X, Y. This means regardless of where it's placed in the project, this component, this adaptive component will always remain vertical. Let's go ahead and place another point. In this case, points can be placed on points. So I'm going to use the set work plane tool to set the X, Y plane of the previous adaptive point and then place this point over the top of it. Coming back and selecting that point, we can use the Z grip on the gizmo to move it in an upwards direction. This upwards direction is controlled by the offset property, which we're going to set to 1000. This particular point, the second point, is going to be used to control the top height of our railing. Now I also want this offset value to be controlled by a parameter. So I'm going to use the associate button to the right hand side and creating a new parameter which we're going to call top railing height. I'm going to leave this as a type property as we want it to be controlled by the types that are in this family. Selecting OK and OK again. Now we need to provide a reference line that connects these two points together and you'll see why in a moment. So up on the ribbon using the reference line tool and in this case ensuring that the 3D snapping is toggled on. The reason for this is when we go ahead and place these points we want this reference line to remain connected to those points. If 3D snapping was off then it will look as though the reference planes are connected, but as soon as we move a point, you'll notice that it's no longer connected to the reference plane. Just to show you how this works, you'll see here when I select the adaptive point and move it around, so too does the second point and the reference line which connects the two. We're gonna place one more point. This point is going to be hosted on that reference line. I'm going to click anywhere to start with. 
coming back and selecting that point, you'll notice it has a normalized curve parameter property. This has a value between zero and one, which says as a percentage, how far along that line is this point placed? In this case, if I set it to 0.5, that means this point will be halfway along its host reference line. Let's move on to having a look at the first parts of the geometry. This is going to be the steel ball joints that are at the top and at the midpoint here where the incoming railings were connected into. I'm going to make this up as a nested component. So I am going to make another family. This too will be a generic model adaptive. It's going to be a very simple family to make. Before we do, just like the other family, we are going to change its category from generic models to railing supports. It too is going to be controlled by a point element, which when we place it and come back and select it, making it adaptive, and it too is going to be a placement point. Over the top of this point, we're going to draw some model lines, starting with an arc. It's going to have its center on the point and is going to have a radius in this case of 38 mil. We're only drawing half an arc because the other part is going to be connected with just a model line. To create this sphere, this ball joint, this shape here is going to be revolved around this line. Now to start with, if we were to select both of these model lines and create a solid form, we would see that the only two options are to create a surface or an extrusion. I want to revolve, so to make the revolve, I first need to add an additional line, this being a reference line turning 3D snapping off in this case, and I'm simply going to draw a reference line down here. A revolve works by selecting our model lines first, then the line that it will be revolved around, in this case is the reference line, and then creating a form. Just to finish off this family, let's go into the family types and create one type. The type name in this case, we will simply just call standard. It's okay. Press okay again to finish. And let's go ahead and save it. Just gonna put this onto my desktop. I'm simply going to call it ball joint. Pressing save and this will be loaded directly into our other family that we started for the post. Because it has a placement point, you can see here that the ball joint is going to be placed at that particular point. I can simply put this over one of these other points, it'll snap to it, and I can click to place it. Doing it again for the midpoint. Let's hit escape to cancel the placement of that point again. Now this post is made up of an additional piece of geometry, which is the extrusion that makes up the post. We first need to define the shape and size of that post. So we're going to put a modeled circle. I'm gonna change the placement plane to the reference level. That's the uh, original ground plane for this family. This is going to have a radius of 24 mil. To make the extrusion, we simply select the line work, we select the reference line, and then creating a solid form. I'm gonna finish this family off by firstly making a type. Because we have a top railing height type parameter here of one meter, that sounds like a fairly logical type name to give it. 
So we'll type in a thousand. And we will also save it. We'll simply call this post. This next family that we're going to make is the one that has the horizontal rails coming out the side of the post. We'll continue on with this particular family because half of it's already been made. In order for the railings to extend out, we need something over here for those railings to connect to. What we need essentially is an almost duplicate of what we've got here. We're going to place a point. This point will be turned into an adaptive point. I want you to take note just to start with, and I'm gonna change this to a wireframe view, that the first point had a number of one, that was the first placement point, whereas the second placement point has a number of two. This is the order of selection at the time that you place this into the project. So you select the first point, and then you'll select the second point. Just like the first point, we also need to change its orients to, to the global Z, then host X, Y option. We're also going to host a point on the X, Y work plane of point two. That point will have its offset property associated with the previous top railing height parameter. And just like before, we will also draw a reference line with the 3D snapping turned on that connects both of these points together. And finally, hosting a point element at the midpoint on that reference line. We can now draw additional reference lines between the points on the previous post to the points on the second post. If we move point two around, you'll see there the connections between those two posts with those reference lines. And what we now need to do is put the geometry in for those railings. Just to keep this simple, I'm going to use the point element tool to place a point at the midpoint of both of these reference planes. I'm going to draw a model line circle, which is going to be hosted on the work plane of those points. This circle is going to have a radius of 16 mil. And on the other point, let's set the work plane and draw the circle. This will have a radius of 12 and a half. Just like the post, we select the line work and we create a solid form. Let's do the same for this one. Select and select and create a solid form. Let's turn the hidden line visual style on. Okay, just to quickly inspect it. That looks like it's going to work. Let's go ahead and save this. So we'll call this one post and rail. And we now need to load this and the other family into our project. So I'm going to insert, load family, from my desktop, picking my post and rail and my post. This project already has a mass in place, so I'm going to go ahead and find it, select it, edit it in place. This gives me now direct access to the line that's been divided on the edge of that object. And I can now grab my post and rail, drag it into my project, put it over a point. Remember this component has two points, so therefore I still need to select the second. Selecting the component on the modify panel using the repeat tool to repeat it across all of those iterations. 
and at the end of the railing where it doesn't have a post, this is where that first family comes in, the post, and we simply place that on the end. Finishing the mass, we now have our sloped railing in place that was made using an adaptive component.